Hi everybody! Welcome back. This is Julie. I'm, uh, my channel is Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. I'm coming back to you with Floss Tube number 12. And um, first I want to apologize for my last video. I didn't notice, of course, until I was done that I had I didn't have my phone positioned quite right. Um, and so my head was like kind of floating like I think like the frame was cutting off like right here. So I apologize because I know it looked really weird. I just, after all that, I just couldn't, I couldn't redo it. Like I was like, eh, it's just gonna have to work. So I tried to position better this time so that, hi, so that um, head's not floating. So, okay, <laughs> so apologize. Um, all right, so let's just get into it. I think this might be a little bit of a shorter video. Um, I don't have a ton to show you today, but I've gotten a few things uh, started. I even have a finish. Um, first, let's start with some haul. Um, oh, you know what? Actually, first, let me tell you. It's Saturday, February 10th. Um, it is snowing. I'm looking out the window right now. It's snowing pretty heavily. We only have like an, maybe an inch, inch and a half right now, but it's coming down pretty good. So pretty. So I'm near Boulder, Colorado. Um, and we're getting some snow today and the reason I'm excited about that is because we've had a total lack of snow. This time last year we'd had like two or three snow days um, even from my work which is like very rare that they would close work. Um, but anyway uh, I'm excited because we need the snow. The, the high country, the mountains, like the skiing areas, they've been okay. Like they had a slow start but now have been getting enough snow but um, down here in the foothills it's just been sad no snow so yay we have some today um, and that kind of ties into um, some haul I have um, on Black Friday I had ordered one piece of fabric from hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie uh, because she had a sale and um, let me grab the pattern. I'm sorry. I'm gonna... Just kidding. I don't know where that pattern is. All right. Never mind. How embarrassing. Anyway, I ordered one piece of fabric from her for uh, Mar my Mirabilia Snow Queen. And even though I knew it was probably going to come in after Christmas, I thought, you know, it's more winter stitching than Christmas stitching. And, and then I had this idea like, ooh, I'm going to stitch on this every time it snows. Well, I just got my fabric. Um, I think I'm getting it today. I was supposed to get it yesterday. It didn't turn up. So I'm going to get it today. So I think I'm going to start stitching that today. But um, it, it's kind of funny, like the fabric took so long to get here and I couldn't start it because we haven't had hardly any snow anyway. So now it's snowing, perfect day to start it. But um, I was kind of disappointed because I know I was like one of the very first orders because I had hit submit and the code wasn't valid and then I refreshed and it went through. So I know I was one of her very first orders, but my fabric just shipped like Monday. But that's okay. I think maybe, you know, obviously it doesn't really matter what order your, your order number comes in. It's probably about what she's dying. And I ordered Pollywog Princess. Apparently that was one of the last fabrics that she was dying for the sale. But that's okay. So anyway, it's coming. I really wanted to show it to you, to, you guys today because I was supposed to get it yesterday, but it wasn't in the mailbox. So I'm going to go get it today. I'll show you next video. I'm going to start Snow Queen hopefully today because it's snowing. Um, and here in Colorado, it snows until like May. Uh, so I should be able to get quite a bit of stitching done on that. Uh, so that was one piece of haul that I hope to show you guys, but just didn't work out. But I'm still going to consider it haul because it should be here today. And then otherwise, I just had a very little bit of haul. I've been so good. Like I have not... I haven't been hauling because, you know, I'm trying to be good and not spend money and do stitch from stash. Which, by the way, my definition of stitch from stash literally means stitch from my stash. I'm not doing, like, I think the real way, which is, like, 
when you complete something like you get a credit that you can then go buy stuff like I'm just trying to use up stash and buy as little as possible so I don't think I'm when I say stitch from stash I'm not really doing it like the way everybody else is doing it so maybe I should call it something else but I don't know what else to call it like I'm trying to stitch from my stash so anyway I needed to make an order on 123 stitch because I needed this gentle arts moonlit path three skeins of it um, for my Ingleside Imaginarium Guardians of Notre Dame style so um, you know try not to spend money but I needed it and these you know are like two something dollars so ordered that from 123 stitch but it was just such a sad order like something else needed to travel with it like just three little flosses that's so sad so I did order one pattern that's pretty good so one pattern and it is a Moira Blackburn sampler called the Hope Sampler. It had been in my cart, or I mean my wish list for like ages. So I'd almost bought it a few times and then was always like, yeah, maybe later. I was finally like, yeah, I'm going to buy that. So this is a um, poem by Emily Dickinson. And uh, Rosewood Manor just came out with a pattern that features that poem too. And it's actually really pretty. And I debated on the two of them, but I think I decided I like this one a little better. Um, it says, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And I've always, always loved that poem. So I already picked what fabric I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do because I'm trying to stitch from stash. Um, I think the called for colors are all DMC. I think I'm going to switch them out to silks. I've got tons of those dinky dyes oops packs. So I think I'm just going to stitch, I'm going to stitch it on silk. Um, but I'm going to use this 40 count linen called sea fog. I can't remember. Blah, blah, blah. I can't remember, uh, the brand. I think it might just be Zweiger. Like, I don't know if it's a certain you know, R&R &R or Lakeside Linens or I can't remember. Uh, it wasn't labeled. It was just labeled 40 count sea fog. So it's like a nice murky blue green. Really pretty. I ordered this for Ink Circles Get Kraken. Uh, online it looked much, much lighter. It looked like really just a white with like a hint of this tone. And then when it actually arrived, I was like, yeah, that's not what I had in mind. No. So I set it aside, knew something would come up eventually. So this is what we're going to do on it. And I don't know what colors I'm going to use. I might try to get close. I like the tones of this. I'll probably try to kind of get close. But we'll see. So that's haul. Don't know when I'll start it, though. Probably not real soon. So that's all I hauled, you guys. Uh, a piece of fabric from Thanksgiving, one pattern, and three skeins of a gentle arts thread. So that was pretty good, right? Like I'm doing good. Um, so then, what have I what have I been working on? So after my last video, um, I was like, I don't know what I'm gonna start. I'm gonna like finish this video and think about it. Well, I settled on Plum Street Samplers Heritage Sampler. There you go. And the reason I did is because Pam from Just Keep Stitching was stitching it and I wanted to work on it because I saw her stitching it and I love her. So, hi Pam if you're watching. So, here's what I did with this though. I'm trying to do stitch from stash. Um, this calls for tons of classic color works and several weeks dye works and I had maybe three of those. Um, in my stash. So I was like, ooh, do I want to order? I mean, it's a lot. It calls for quite a, quite a lot of flosses there. Well, I could order them all, but then I have to wait for them to get here. So then I can't start it right away like I want to. And then I'm spending money that I shouldn't be. So I decided to just go diving through my stash. Um, 
And then I decided, you know what, I really like this pattern. Like, I want to really, like, do something nice with it. So I converted all of it to dinky dye silks. So I am doing this in silks. I'm doing it on... The fabric is Lakeside Linen uh, 36 Count in Lintel. Which, by the way, Michelle Farm Girl... Uh, was just talking in her video about how nice the lakeside linens are and she's so right they are they, it might be my favorite might be my favorite now the downside is they don't come in like tons of crazy colors or anything they're really kind of simple more neutrals but they're really beautiful to work on so I'm absolutely loving stitching on them um, so here's where I am Okay, wait, here, let me show you the fabric first. It's got, it's a neutral with like a little bit of green modeling, which is pretty racy for Lakeside Linen. Um, but there's some green in the pattern and it's really still very neutral, so I thought it would work well. And it is, I, I like the way it's looking. So here's how far I got. I got a George Washington and a boat and I got a flag. The flag. Oh geez, the flag is one over one. <sighs> one over one on 36 count, you guys. It's a pain in the you know what. One over one. Look at that guy. So I want to talk about this flag. Because I almost didn't buy the pattern because of this flag. Um like when I saw the pattern, I was like, love it. Oh my gosh. And then I was like, oh, I don't know. So I'm going to get a little political, just a little, just a little, you guys. And, and just say my, my brief little piece. Um, so this flag is called the Gadsden flag. And it does fit on this sampler. It was designed in 1775 and it was a flag of the American Revolution, independence from Britain. So that's a great thing, right? I, I love it for that. In modern times, it has been adapted by uh, libertarians and the Tea Party. And that's kind of, that's where I was hesitating. And if you're a member of the Tea Party and you're offended, I don't really care. Sorry. Um, so I was a little bit like, ooh. But then I really thought about it, read up on the history. I was like, it's fine. It fits with this sampler. The intention of the flag originally was a sign of American independence. I think that's awesome. But it's also why modern day patriots, um, which I'm a patriot too, or I, I hope all Americans are patriots, but some are, you know, not my cup of tea. Um, God, I'm going to offend somebody. Now I am sorry because that just, I don't know. I'm not trying to be rude. Okay, sorry. So anyway, if it's in the sampler, George Washington, American Revolution, it works. So I'm, I'm rolling with it. Um, but I wanted to give you a little history lesson on that flag. It's also um, been adopted by the Marines, which is cool. A lot of like Marines uh, fly that flag. My dad and my brother were Marines. Fun fact about me. Hoorah, love the Marines. Okay, so then it was my birthday. So my birthday was Monday, January 29th. Um, and I had been telling you guys for a while that I'm gonna do, I was gonna start my Chatelaine, Marie Antoinette Chatelaine as my special birthday start and I did let me show you what it looks like like this is a really poor picture okay but like kind of what it's supposed to look like so pretty I'm doing it with all the called for um fan you know silks and uh, what are they called? The metallic threads, the rainbow gallery, petites, all that stuff. I'm doing it with all the called for. Um, I am doing it on 32 count picture this plus French lilac. And I am 
almost done with the first section. And let me show you, here's my Marie Antoinette needle minder from um, Jen's needle minders on Facebook. And then here's another Marie Antoinette needle minder that I made from um, an artist called Jasmine Beckett Griffin or something. I always get her name wrong. Um, Strangeling is the company she runs and it's a pen that she sold and I just made it into a needle minder. So really cute. Anyway, here we go. Now, I know you guys are probably thinking, is that, that's not showing up so hot, right? But it's, there's a ton of beading still to go on here. Um, and when I put the beading on, it's gonna, it's gonna work a little better. So don't fret, guys. That dark blue will pop a little bit more once I beat it. I know right now it's getting a little bit lost on the fabric. Ooh, the blue's so cool. It's like an electric crazy blue. Um, I have to do, I'm almost done. So this is just the first section. I'm almost done with all the cross stitches, but then I have to do a bunch of Algerian eyelets and roads in there. And they're going to be done in this um, light blue color, most of them. So those will really show up. And then where the dark blue is, like there's going to be a bunch of beading in there that's going to be lighter colored so it'll show better. So this has been a delight to work on. I love, I love it. It's been wonderful, but <laughs> I need to work on it in daytime. <laughs> it's way too hard to see. This is almost like working on black. And, um, in the daytime, I'm fine, but in the evening, even with my lamp, I, I had to frog a lot because I was accidentally going like over three instead of over two because I couldn't see well or like I was just missing a hole here and there. Um, I frogged this little blue right here, this blue dart. I frogged this four times before I found my mistake. And what my mistake was, was on one stitch, I hadn't gone the full two spaces. I'd only gone one space and then it threw the whole thing off. So, um, I have to work on it in the daytime so I can see what I'm doing. So it's probably going to be a weekend project. But that was my birthday start. I worked on it for a couple days and I think I got quite a lot done. And that's just the very like little center bit. Like it's just, it's just this little bit right here. So I still have a lot. I still have a lot to go. But that's fine. Shadowings are huge projects and they take forever. We all know that. Okay, so what else? So then then I was like, okay, that's been fun. Let's let's try something new. Um, okay, what next? What next? I showed you guys in my last video I had several things like kind of kitted up and ready to go. I didn't end up going with any of those. I went like phew, total curveball because I sat down to like organize some stuff and um, I started pulling patterns that I had that needed kitted up and started matching them up with fabric. And then I got really excited like, oh, I want to stitch that now, now that I picked a fabric. And so that's what happened with this project. I finally, I had these sitting waiting in the wings. I finally picked a fabric and then I had to start it. So my next start was Little House Needleworks Early American Series. Maybe I was also feeling real patriotic from the Plum Street Sampler, Heritage Sampler, or yeah, yeah. So anyway, I started with number one, Betsy Ross. And I have a finish. I finished Betsy. I'm, I'm stitching on Picture This Plus 32 Count in Relic. So I went a little bit like, uh, you know, everybody's kind of stitching this on like some nice neutrals. The called for fabric is uh, Weak Style Works 10 Roof. And a lot of people are kind of stitching it on a nice neutral. I thought this could work on an aged modeled linen. So this is Relic, which is this like kind of yellowy. And here's my finish, Betsy Ross. And um, 
I did majorly convert. So again, I'm stitching from my stash. I had three of these colors, maybe four. Just, I, I didn't have most of them. So I went through and I pulled conversions. So, you know, uh, Plum Street, I changed to Dinky Dyes. This one, I'm still sticking with like gentle arts, classic color works, um, but I just pulled things that were close. So I'm really doing like not the called for colors, but I'm happy with it. I, I'm, you know, I'm in the same vein. I'm picking browns, I'm picking blues, I'm picking reds, but I'm liking it. Even with the conversions, I'm, I'm happy. I actually really love the red I picked. It's like super deep and awesome. And I like my blue, which is Betsy Ross and the dress. Um, it's got a, it gets a little, a little purpley, so it can be a little blurple. Um, so any section that's super duper purple, I'm trying to avoid and just use the more blue pieces of it. Um, I am gonna do these all on one piece. There are nine of them, so it'll be three o'clock across and three down. And then I'm considering Vanna's um, border, but I'm not decided yet. I do I like her border a lot. I just I'm not sure yet. I think I'm gonna stitch all nine and see how it looks, and then decide if it needs a border because I'm not sure it will. I kind of like the stitch. The stitch border so I might just stick with that and not do any more than that so once those are all done I'll see if I want to go for it um, those stitch up really quick that took me three days to stitch Betsy so I thought that was decent um, and then the last thing I've been working on and I was actually working on this today is the Guardians of Notre Dame Sal by Ingleside Imaginarium and I am doing that with all the called for DMC um, and then that one gentle arts moonlit path that I ordered from one, two, three stitch. So here is February. It's the purple. Uh, the blue gray one was January. Here's what the, the frame is going to look like. You guys, this, I am loving this Sal. Like, I'm loving it. I think she, I think her name's Brittany, right? Am I wrong on that? She's doing such a, oh, it is snowing like crazy now. Yes, I love it. I love the snow, you guys. Um, oh, she did such a good job. It looks so cool. I cannot wait. I can't wait to see what else she comes up with. This is a style I am absolutely like keeping up with this year because I love it. Like no piece has been like, oh, mm -hmm. like every, I know it's only been two pieces, but I'm like, yes, yes. It can only continue to be amazing. Like, oh, I'm so excited. So here's where I am. I'm almost done with February. I've got like a little bit, like one more color and then the back stitching. However, I'm not excited about the border. So with January, I got I got away with like not doing all the border because like, oh, I'm waiting for the gentle arts threads to come in. Can't stitch the border. Well, now they're in. So now I gotta stitch that border and I don't want to. Hmm. So I'm gonna try to like catch up the border for January and February. And then I'm probably not gonna work ahead. I'm probably gonna stitch the border like as each section comes out. looks so cool right but the back stitching makes it come alive because that you know at first you're just like huh okay I guess and then you back stitch it and it's like whoa so awesome so I am so excited about this sal and I'm loving it oh I forgot to tell you so it's 28 count cashel I dyed it myself um it's just a very faint like blue modeled look to it which the purple is popping on that like whoa okay so that's my whips that's what I've been working on 
Um, what am I working on next? I, you know, last video I showed you all these things I wanted to work on and I didn't like work on any of them. <laughs> so I'm probably not going to like promise. I'm not going to promise any of this, but, um, when I went stash diving, I kitted up a few more things. I have these smalls. So little house needleworks giving thanks. It says I'm thankful for my daily bread and also for my cross stitch thread. I remembered that without looking. I thought that'll stitch up really fast. It calls for classic color works. And then I also have Abby Rose Designs, My Soul is Fed by Needle and Thread. Also a, a cute little design with Weeks Dye Works. So I was thinking like I've been working on all these big things. I was thinking maybe a couple little small uh, projects that I can finish really quickly will kind of boost me a little bit with my stitching mojo. I'm going to do both of those on... R&R &R Linen 36 Count Winter's Brew, or Winter Brew. I have a little extra scrap piece of that. So might get to those, might not, maybe, we'll see. And then I also want to stitch this Brenda Gervais Crumpets and Tea. When I saw this, I had to get it. I thought it was hilarious. It's, I know, it's so hard to see, guys. Ugh. Terrible picture. It's really dark. Ugh, that looks awful. Like, you can't see anything. I can't wait to stitch it so I can show you what it really looks like. But um, the reason I bought it, I just, when I saw it, I just started cracking up. It says, a garden tea party of three, twas me, myself, and I. I ate all the berries and cream. Myself ate all the crumpets. Twas also I who ate the pie and passed the tea to me. So I thought that was hilarious. It calls for like a million flosses, like a million for such a tiny pattern. But it built my stash because they're only going to use a little bit of it for each section and I'm going to have all that left over. And I think I'm going to do it on this. I've been hanging on to this MCG Textiles 32 Count Linen and Natural. I bought this like when I first got into cross stitching and didn't really know any better. And then I read about how uneven and terrible it is. So I'm going to like open it up and see if I can find a section that doesn't look too bad. And I think I'm going to do it on that. And I think it works for like the prim style. Like even if it is a little bit uneven or has some slubs, I think it kind of fits this pattern. So might get to that. Might not. We'll see. I'm definitely going to uh, stitch some more on Guardians of Notre Dame. I'm probably going to need another day just a day on that to finish it up or just two day. I'll probably finish it today and then I'll start snow queen I think next. And then after that, who knows, who knows? Um, but yeah, so that is, that's my stitching plans. And then, um, I also, I told you guys, I've told you guys like the last two videos, how I'm going to start knitting and I bought all this stuff and I still haven't started you guys, but guess what? Caroline from off the grid needle arts is teaching Ginger Gerald how to knit. And she's had one video so far, like kind of talking about the supplies you need, which I have. Um, and then I think next video, she's gonna show like how to cast on and like start, um, like she's gonna teach him how to knit. So like, it's perfect. Cause I bought all this stuff, but I still haven't started it. So now I, Caroline is gonna teach me how to knit too. She doesn't know that, but that's what's gonna happen. So, um, go check it out. If you want to learn to knit, she's going to do like a learn to knit, like floss tube. So Caroline at off the grid needle arts, go check her out. If you want to learn to knit, cause I'm going to, so maybe next video, I'll show you guys a couple like rows of knitting. Maybe I won't. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So really that's all I've got. I think, um, I don't know. What are we at? Almost 30 minutes. That's not bad. I didn't know if I even had that much material. So, um, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done now. So catch me next time. If I didn't totally lose you with the tea party tangent, I'm sorry. I went off the rails a little bit there. Um, so anyway, if you're not totally offended, watch my next video. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. Bye.